Welcome to iLecture Online and our next topic in the section that describes motion in one dimension is the equations of kinematics. Now everybody knows what equations mean but not everybody knows what kinematics means and it turns out kinematics simply means motion so that says equations of motion. So we're going to derive three equations of motion. We're going to do that using some calculus and if you don't like calculus or calculus is beyond your level don't worry about it. Stay tuned because eventually we're going to end up with three equations that are going to be used by anybody doing physics in doing mechanics. So the equations are important and for those who've seen some calculus before you can see here how we're going to derive them. So we start with the premise that the acceleration will be constant that makes it for an easier set of equations and the second premise is that the acceleration can be defined as the change in velocity over time. Now the dv dt is kind of the same as delta v delta t and we'll show you later why that is so. So what we're going to do is we're going to separate the variables. So we're going to write this as dv, and oh my pen just died, dv equals a dt. So what I've done here is I've moved the dt over and turned the equation around. Now I'm going to integrate both sides, so the integral of dv is equal to a times the integral of dt. Remember a was a constant, so it doesn't have to be an integral sign. So we end up with v is equal to a times t plus a constant of integration. Now, what is c equal to? Well, that depends. What we can say is that c can be found by finding velocity when time is equal to zero. So we can say that v sub naught is equal to v when t is equal to zero. So we're going to find the special condition when time is equal to zero. So v sub naught, which is equal to v when t is equal to zero, is equal to a times, so now we're going to replace the t by the zero, plus c. Now that's called the initial velocity, v with a little zero underneath, that's actually a, a sub naught as we call it. That, mean, that means that this is the velocity when time is equal to zero and now we can see that the constant of integration equals that amount right there. So this constant of integration simply means that's the velocity when time is equal to zero. So this equation can now be written as v is equal to at plus v sub naught and we like to write v sub naught first so we're going to write v is equal to v sub naught plus at. And that is our first equation of kinematics and let's write it up here as a summary. So the velocity is equal to v sub naught plus acceleration times time. So what this really means is that you can calculate the velocity of any object as long as you know what the initial velocity is when time is equal to zero, how fast it's accelerating and how long it's been accelerating at that acceleration and then you can find the velocity at any time. So that's our first equation. We'll see some examples of that later. All right. Secondly, now we're going to write the definition of velocity. dx dt is equal to velocity. So that's the definition of velocity. It's the change in distance over time. And since velocity is equal to this, we can replace that by that. So we can say this is equal to v sub naught plus a times t. What I'm going to do now is move the dt over to the other side so we can write that dx is equal to v sub naught plus a t multiplied times d t. And now I can go ahead and integrate both sides. If I integrate the left side and integrate the right side, what do I get? Well, let's move over here where we have some more room. When I integrate the x, I simply get x. So x is equal to, when I integrate this first term, now v sub naught is just a constant, so v sub naught times d t, when I integrate that, I get v sub naught times t. When I integrate a t dt, notice that t integrated becomes t squared divided by 2. So this becomes plus 1 half a t squared. And then finally, of course, I still have a constant of integration on both sides, which I can combine and write plus c. Now again, we want to know what that plus c is. I think I know what that is, but let's figure it out. Again, we can solve for c by de defining that x sub naught is equal to x when t is equal to zero, right? When time is equal to zero, x simply becomes x sub naught. So we can then say that x sub naught is equal to v sub naught times zero, because I'm replacing t with zero, plus one half times, this would be a times z, t squared, and again t is zero, so that's zero squared, plus the constant of integration. 
Notice that this term is zero, that term is zero, which means that the constant of integration is equal to the initial position or the initial distance of the object when time is equal to zero, which means that if I want to rewrite this equation, I can say that x is equal to v sub naught t plus one half a t squared plus, now the constant is now going to become x sub naught. And then we rearrange the terms so we can write that x is equal to x sub naught plus v sub naught t plus one half a t squared. And that becomes the second equation of kinematics. So we first had an equation to determine the velocity of an object. Now we have an equation to determine the position of an object. And of course, both of those are as a function of time. So if you really want to write it correctly, I guess we could write it like this. To clarify just a little bit more, let me make that small change. It's subtle, but it makes sense. So v as a function of time is equal to that. And here we can write x as a function of time is equal to x sub naught plus v sub naught times time plus one half a t squared. Remember, x is position, v is velocity, acceleration is time. So using some integral tricks here, we found the two equations of kinematics. Now, how do we find the third equation of kinematics? Well, it turns out that if we substitute for v sub naught, what v sub naught is equal to, which is v minus a t when we solve for that, and actually, no, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to try and get rid of the t. I'm going to solve this equation for t and substitute it for this t and that t and see what we get. So let's do that. So taking that first equation of kinematics, I have v is equal to v sub naught plus a t, which means that if I move the v sub naught over here, I get v minus v sub naught is equal to a t. And if I now divide both sides by a, the a's cancel out, so t is equal to v minus v sub naught divided by a. And I'm going to substitute that for this t right here and this t right there. So when we do that, we get x is equal to x sub naught plus v sub naught times v minus v sub naught over a plus one half times a times v minus v sub naught quantity squared. And of course, I can't forget to divide it by a. All right. Notice that this equation will become the third equation of kinematics, and it doesn't have a t in it. That's a very handy equation because sometimes we're given a problem and we're not given the time and we need an equation to solve the problem with, it will be this equation right here. So let's simplify that equation algebraically. So we need to square this. So that means we get x is equal to x sub naught plus, I'm going to multiply this through, so I get v naught v over a minus v sub naught squared over a. So simply multiply this through. I get plus one half a divided by now, if I square the denominator, I get a squared, so I'm going to write a squared right there. And then notice right away that this a and one of those a's will cancel out, times the numerator squared, which is v squared minus 2v v sub naught plus v sub naught squared. Right away, I'm going to simplify that. It looks mean and ugly, but stay with me. It's not that bad. I'm now going to multiply the 1 half times what's in here. And so I get x is equal to x sub naught plus I have v sub naught v over a minus v sub naught squared over a and then plus one half v squared over a because I still have the a from the denominator right here and then it's minus the one half cancels out the two so it's going to be v v sub naught over a and then one half uh, one over two a times v squared here, we get uh, a plus v sub naught squared over 2a. Well, here we have a v sub naught v over a and a minus v v sub naught over a. So this cancels out that. I like that. When I can cancel out things, I'm a lot happier. All right, now notice that I have a minus v sub naught squared a and I have a plus 1 half v sub naught squared over a. So a minus whole and plus a half. That's minus a half. So what I can now do is over here, I can say that I have x equals x sub naught. I'm going to combine this term and this term, which gives me minus one half 
V sub naught squared over A, so that takes care of those two, and then have plus one half V squared over A. I think I'm almost there. I'm not going to move the X sub naught to the other side. I'm going to factor out a um, I'm going to factor out a one half or one over two a. All right, let's do that. So we have x minus x sub naught equals if I factor out a one over two a, I will have left a minus v sub naught squared plus a v squared. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by two a. So that means I have an x minus x sub naught times 2a is equal to minus v sub naught squared plus v squared. Now I'm going to move this v sub naught squared to the other side. It's negative. It will become positive. So now we can say that we have v sub naught squared um, plus 2a times x minus x sub naught is equal to v squared. And now, if we rearrange the equation, we now have our third equation of kinematics. And so now we can say that the v squared, which of course is a function of time, is equal to v sub naught squared plus 2a times the change in x, x minus x sub naught. And this now becomes the third equation of kinematics. So we have equation number one, which is the defined velocity as a function of time. Equation number two, which defines position as a function of time. And then equation number three, where v is not according to a function of time because time is gone. So now we have v squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus twice the acceleration times the change in the distance. And these now become the three equations of kinematics which will guide us through the rest of this section. So if you didn't quite follow what I was doing here, no problem. All you need to remember is these three equations. If you do know a little bit of calculus, then you can see how the definition of acceleration and the definition of velocity helped us find those two equations, which then when combined and solved simultaneously, so we can eliminate time, we end up with our third equation of kinematics that does not involve time. So now that we have the definitions from our first video and the three equations of kinematics of our second video, we're now ready to go and solve a bunch of these problems. So, Let's go ahead and do that. Maybe one more thing. In my next few videos, I think I want to talk also about graphing one-dimensional motion. So that will also be part of our development and how we look at one-dimensional motion.